Hello everybody, this video is on electromagnetic induction, Lenz's law. Before we go through Lenz's law, it's important to review Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction states that any changes in magnetic flux, that is delta phi, will induce an EMF in a conductor. This is summarized by the equation epsilon, which is EMF, equals to minus n multiplied by delta phi over delta time. So that's the change in flux over time. This equation tells us that the magnitude of EMF is proportional to two things, the number of turns of the coil, and more importantly, the rate of flux change that the conductor is experiencing. In the video on Faraday's law, we looked at the example where a straight conductor is moved into a uniform magnetic field, and as a result, an induced current is observed in the conductor. Lenz's law explains the direction of the induced current. The law states that the induced current will be in a direction such that its magnetic field reduces the change in magnetic flux that produced it in the first place. Remember that any type of current will be able to produce its own magnetic field. So in the example we saw before, the induced current that's flowing through the straight conductor will be producing a circular magnetic field that's going around the conductor itself. Lenz's law says that this magnetic field that's produced by the current will be in a direction so that it will interact with the external magnetic field to reduce the change in flux that produced the EMF in the first place. If we apply the right hand palm rule on this induced current, so our thumb points upwards in the same direction, and our fingers pointing into the screen, representing the magnetic field, our palm should be facing to the left of the screen. And this represents the force that's generated as a result of this induced current. Notice how the force produced by the induced current is opposing the direction of the initial force that produced the movement of the conductor into the magnetic field in the first place. In other words, this induced current will be flowing in a direction such that the resultant force produced by this induced current in the magnetic field is always opposing the initial force that created the change in flux in the very first place. Lenz's law accounts for the negative or minus sign in Faraday's law equation. The minus sign is here to signify that the EMF and the resultant induced current will be always opposing the change in flux. Lenz's law is justified by the law of conservation of energy. The opposing force that accompanies the induced current will cause resistance when moving the conductor. That is, when you try to move the conductor into the magnetic field, you will feel an opposing force that's preventing you from moving the conductor into the field any further. This will effectively reduce the mechanical or the kinetic energy of the conductor. So the speed of a conductor V will decrease as the opposing force decelerates the conductor. The kinetic energy is transformed into electrical energy, and this is in the form of the induced current. The transformation is important here to understand because this is the reason why the total energy of the system, that is, the electrical energy and the kinetic energy combined, remains constant, which is consistent with the law of conservation of energy. So this transformation from kinetic energy into electrical energy justifies why the force generated from the induced current must always oppose the initial movement of the conductor, which caused the change in flux in the very first place. The association between Lenz's law and the conservation of energy can be also understood by conceptualizing the contrary. What happens if the force is not opposing? What happens if the force actually facilitates the movement of the conductor? If the force generated by the induced current hypothetically accelerates the conductor's motion rather than opposing it, this will cause two things. First of all, the electric energy increases due to the production of the induced current. And at the same time, due to the acceleration of the conductor's motion, its kinetic energy also increases. So when we have electric energy and kinetic energy increase at the same time, this will increase the total energy of the system, producing energy out of nowhere, which contradicts the law of conservation of energy. Furthermore, 
As the kinetic energy of the conduct increases, it's important to notice that its speed will also increase. According to Faraday's law, the magnitude of EMF and also induced current is proportional to the rate of flux change. If the conductor has a greater speed, it will experience a greater change in flux, and that in turn will result in a greater EMF and induced currents. In simpler words, as a conductor is moving faster, it will experience greater amounts of flux change, which will in turn produce more electric energy. So this will turn into a never-ending cycle where we are producing electric energy in the form of induced current out of nowhere, while the kinetic energy of the conductor is also increasing simultaneously. Like Faraday's law, Lenz's law can be demonstrated using solenoids as well. When we move a bar magnet in or out of a solenoid, we will be inducing EMF in the solenoid and hence producing current that can be detected by the ammeter. Lenz's law is more useful for explaining and accounting for the different directions of the current produced. If the magnet is moved towards the solenoid, the reading in the ammeter will be deflected in one direction, as opposed to when the magnet is moved away from the solenoid, the current direction is reversed, causing the ammeter reading to be deflected in the other direction. And of course, if the bar magnet is fully submerged within the solenoid, the solenoid does not experience any flux change, and hence there will be no induced EMF and no current produced in the solenoid. Suppose we have a bar magnet whose south pole is pointing towards the solenoid and the north pole is pointing away from it. When this bar magnet is moved towards the solenoid, there is an increase in flux. And as a result of this change in flux and Faraday's law, there will be induced EMF and current flowing through the solenoid. In this case, the induced current flows in a clockwise direction as shown. And as it's going through the solenoid and the circular coils, we can use the right-hand grip rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field. In the right-hand grip rule, our fingers will be curled around in the same direction as the current, which goes like this, comes towards us and back down, and then away from us in the back of the solenoid. So if we curl our fingers this way using the right hand, our thumb should be pointing to the right. And this tells us the south pole of the magnetic field is over here, while the north pole of the field is over here. The south pole of the magnetic field will then repel the south pole of the bar magnet. This repulsion is the opposing force outlined in Lenz's law. Remember that Lenz's law states the direction of the induced current will be always in such a way so that its magnetic field will oppose or reduce the changing flux that produced the EMF in the first place. Since it's the movement of this bar magnet towards the solenoid that induced the EMF and current in the first place, the magnetic field produced by the induced current will want to push the bar magnet away by making the south pole next to the south pole of the bar magnets so that there's a repulsion between them. And by pushing the bar magnet away, we can then reduce the increase in magnetic flux that induced the EMF in the very beginning. If we take the same bar magnets, again, the south pole is near the solenoid and the north pole is further away. If we move this bar magnet away from the solenoid, this is going to cause a decrease in magnetic flux. According to Faraday's law, there will be induced EMF and current flowing through the conductor. But this time, as you can see, the current flows in a counterclockwise direction. It flows downwards at the back, comes to the front from the bottom, and then flows upwards back to the other side of the solenoid. If we use that right hand grip rule, our thumb will be pointing to the left this time. And this tells us the north pole is on the left hand side and the south pole of the magnetic field is on the right hand side. The north pole of the magnetic field will then produce an attractive force pulling the bar magnets towards the solenoid. This should make sense to you because it is the initial movement of the bar magnet away from the solenoid that induced the EMF and current in the first place. So by Lenz's law, the induced current will produce its magnetic field so that we can oppose that motion by forming the north pole here and generating 
an attractive force pulling the bar magnets towards the solenoid. This way, the induced current will be able to minimize the changing flux that induced the EMF in the first place. Besides the relative motion between the bar magnets and the solenoid, the position or orientation of the poles also matters when it comes to current direction. Previously, we've already explained that when the south pole is towards the bar magnets, a clockwise direction current will be formed in the solenoid. If we reverse the direction of this bar magnets and we push it towards the solenoid at the same speed, what we will expect to see is that the current will be generated in a counterclockwise direction. This is because in the first scenario, the current wants to produce a south pole here, repelling the bar magnet away and hence reducing the increase in flux. In the second example, it must produce a magnetic field whose north pole is next to the bar magnets because this way the north pole will repel the bar magnets allowing the induced current to reduce the increase in flux that produced the EMF in the first place. So in both settings, we have a repulsion between the two magnetic fields, but because in the second one, the north pole is pointing towards the solenoid, the induced current direction must be reversed to allow the north pole to be produced right next to the bar magnets. Electromagnetic induction involving Faraday's law and Lenz's law can also be applied in large metal plates or sheets. When a conductor of large surface area experiences changing flux, there will be also induced current present. In this case, the induced current has a circular direction, and this is what we call eddy currents. Eddy currents are currents that travel in large surface areas of conductors in circular directions. When this metal sheet is moved out of the magnetic field, it experiences a decrease in magnetic flux. And according to Fader's law, this is what induces the EMF and current. According to Lenz's law, the direction of this induced current will be in a clockwise direction. Because if we use our right-hand grip rule, where our fingers also follow clockwise direction, which is current, our thumb will be pointing into the page which represents the magnetic field. And this is because the original uniform magnetic field is also pointing into the page. And if we have a decrease in magnetic flux, the opposite of that is the increasing flux. So what the induced current or the edit current wants to do is to generate magnetic field that's also traveling in the same direction, which is opposing the change in flux that produced the EMF in the first place. If this metal sheet is moved into the magnetic field, there's going to be an increase in flux. And as a result, the induced current will try to produce field lines that's coming out of the page. And if we use a right hand grip rule, this will allow us to determine that the eddy current direction will be in a counterclockwise direction. This concludes the video on Lenz's law.